Hey guys, welcome to Evolution Now. This is the 16th podcast. I'm your host, Damien Chinappi, alongside JJ Wolf. And before we get to our guest, just going to read a quote that will start off our conversation. It isn't the materials that make it a house, it's the structure and the form. And that was said by the great Aristotle. So our guest today is the owner and broker at Calhor Realty in Oklahoma. She is also an entrepreneur who owns and manages Huckleberry Hill Barn, a premier venue for all events in the heart of the state of Oklahoma. And with over 10 years of experience in the world of real estate, she is now host of two shows, Make It Happen on YourHomeTV.com and Negotiator Lux, featured exclusively on the Reveal streaming platform. It's our pleasure to welcome to the Evolution Now Project, Mariah Calhoun. Hey guys, thank you so much for having me. That was quite an intro. I need to have you like walk around with me. <laughs> welcome, welcome guys. It's good to be here on another episode of Evolution Now with a wonderful <laughs> guest who has a, a lot of accomplishments in her professional life. And um, yeah, so uh, just to kick it off, you know, if you if you want to, I have a question for you, Mariah, and then also if you want to just talk a little bit about yourself, tell tell our audience who you are and and uh, what you're about. But um, what what is the earliest inspiration that you can remember played a significant role in your life? Oh gosh, I've never thought of this. Um, you know, I don't know. It, it, a lot of people idolize other people, and I I honestly can say. <laughs> Not that I don't idolize people. There's just not many people that I have, I guess, fond over and said, oh, I want to do that. Um, I think my growth personally was just like my own. It was my own thoughts that I was like, that's what I want to do. I kept setting goals for myself and like, okay, I want to meet that or exceed that. And so I think that's kind of where all of this started going. Um I don't know. Maybe, maybe I should just go back to the basics and say my mom. <laughs> she she was a she is she's a hard worker, and I just always kind of was like I always want to stay busy. I want to I want to immerse myself in as much as possible, and I have somehow found found a way to do that. Beautifully said. Beautifully said. Yeah, I, I think most people can relate that their mother is an inspiration. You know, at the very basis. You know of, of you know ushering us into this world and are giving us life, but, you know, <laughs> and, you know, this setting the way, you know, the role models that we experience in our families. And um, yeah. So if you want to, you know, say a little bit more about how y y you were saying that you maybe didn't idolize anybody specifically, like not a celebrity or a teacher mm -hmm. or anything, but you kind of were drawn to the things that you were drawn to in life and kind of motivated intrinsically. So in in what direction and, and how has that taken different turns in your life? I know you're, you're on a TV show and you're in real estate. Yeah. So I doing a handful of podcasts, I've kind of self-discovered where all this comes from. Um, I noticed for many, many years, I'd hold myself back. So like all through middle school and high school, I would just, I'd watch what everybody else was doing. And I think that's why I was like, I, I kind of just did this myself because I, always watch other people accomplish things. And I'm like, I can do that. Why am I not doing that? And I'd always, I was so fearful of what people would think. And so for forever, I didn't do anything. Uh, I didn't do sports. I quit everything. I quit piano. I quit. I did play softball. I quit softball. I, I guess I played basketball. I quit. Everything I did, I quit. <laughs> and I would just like observe. And as I got older, I'm like, what is this? Like, why am I just observing everybody else living to their fullest and not doing it for myself? So then um, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I grew up. Um, I ended up in college. I didn't even know. I ended up doing what's called multiple disciplinary studies. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, I went in for marketing or I went in for this. I had no idea. So I was doing a little bit of everything. I did sociology, psychology, women's studies, um, almost minored in Spanish. Like I was just all over the place. And after I graduated, that's whenever I just was like, okay, crap, I don't know what I'm going to do. So I ended up getting a job at um, an apartment complex where I started to manage it. And then I learned probably after the first six to eight months, I was like, oh my gosh, like I have made it to the top and the top sucks here. You know, you're, you're managing all these apartment complexes, dealing with all these people. 
And I think um, at that time, gosh, I'm like 21, 22. And that's when I was just like, I've got to figure this out. And I have to stop holding myself back because I'm not going to be somebody's shadow for the rest of my life. And that's just kind of like the start of the balls to the wall type of mentality where I was just like, forget what people think, forget holding myself back, forget watching what other people are doing and I'm going to do it. So that's whenever I got into real estate because my mom was in real estate growing up and I watched her, I watched her kind of do that, you know, watched her really just go zero to 60. I'd say that's the start of it. I I was my own worst enemy, would hold myself down. And then once I stopped holding myself down, that's when I was like, okay, we're going to make this happen. Hence make it happen. Um, And I just went, I mean, when I tell you I went zero to 60 in real estate, I did. It was like one, one year selling nothing. I sold absolutely nothing. Um, I was like, this is for the birds. Like I quit, I'm done. And my husband's like, no, absolutely not. You're not going to quit. You're going to give this five years. So I was like, okay, five years. <laughs> and that's whenever I started go- selling 40 houses, got to a point where I was selling almost a hundred homes a year by myself. And I was like, okay, I'm really good at this. And that's whenever I think I broke out of my shell and just was like, let's just do this, you know, and started becoming a team lead, creating all these different things. And then it just flourished from there. That's amazing to hear. Sorry, Damien, I just want to jump in and just ask you for our uh, audience that's in real estate. Do you have any top five tips maybe that come to mind uh, in the game of real estate for how, how people can be more successful in their in their business? Yes. So the more down to earth you are, the better you'll do. Um, the whole salesy, gimmicky, like, you know, sign here. What's this? Let's do this. Let's sell this. Let's write this contract. Like that doesn't that doesn't work. Um, the more natural I was in approaching people and just being like, here's how this operates. If you like the house, you like it. If you don't, you don't let's move on. And I found a lot of people would just be like, my gosh, you know, this is like the most refreshing experience I've ever had. Like you'll show me a hundred homes. If I need to see a hundred homes and like, yeah, I mean, that's our main goal. Like, sure. I'm in a job to make money, but I'm not here to also put people in a financial situation where they absolutely hate me and then they don't ever refer me and then I don't have business. So I was like, I I've got both of our interests here, right? I need a job. I need to get paid and you need something, you need somebody to help you uh, fulfill your goal of purchasing a house. So let's do this. So being very natural down to earth, not pushy, that's gone really, really, really well for me. Um, Following up with people. I can't tell you how many of, um, we haven't talked about this yet, but I have 40 agents at my company now. And, um, that's the one thing I preach is follow up. Like somebody calls you, this is what they're needing. You need to follow back up. You know, today's in today's time, people will click on Zillow and two seconds later, they'll click, click on realtor.com and they'll go to Trulia. They'll click. So now they've already clicked on three different realtors, right? So sure, you've talked to them one time, but guess what? They've talked to five other people. So you need to be following up with them and you need to stay stay top of mind. So um, those are kind of my top two, if you will. I could keep, did you ask for five? Yeah, I mean, whatever comes naturally. Was like, that, was a, that was a great, yeah, that was a great <laughs> freestyle answer to the question. You know, absolutely is, you know, be present, you know, be be authentic. Don't be pushy, yeah. be real, show people all the houses that they want. Sure, you got to make money, but you also got to make people feel like you're there to give them what they need and what they want. Right. Hey, Damien, um, what's, uh, what's next on the list? Yeah, before we jump into that question, I was just curious. You said that you didn't really idolize people growing up, but it, that makes me think you must have had a very strong inner voice. Is that fair to say? I think that's fair to say after really being out there and getting feedback from like friends and family and like people who have watched me over the last 10 years. That's kind of the one thing that people say. They're like, God, you're just so fearless in what you're doing. And like, no shit's given. Sorry if I can't say that, but it took a long time to get there. So, um, yes, I would say that I have a very strong inner voice. That's like eye on the prize. So combined with that, you said you were fearful of others, you know, you, you were worried what they thought and their opinions. So it almost feels like there was like a slingshot effect of like all this time where you're like on the sidelines and then like going, then you went boom. Was there a moment or a day when that like inner voice was like enough is enough? Or was it like a kind of like a gradual building, 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 a little, little effort, little more, a little more, a little more, and then a hundred, or was it like zero to a hundred? 
I mean, I feel like it was zero to a hundred, but just watching the timeline, it was like, I was the person on the sidelines and then I realized, okay, why am I holding myself back? Then I went out there and then putting myself out there and just the way people would respond to that. They're like, oh my gosh, like you do that and you do that. This is amazing. Like kind of that feedback I was getting. And then even my husband, he, um, you know, self-doubt people self-talk, talk themselves down all the time. And he's like, I don't think you understand how different you are. Like, he's like, I don't think you understand. You're just wired in a way most people aren't. And so those kind of conversations made me realize like, okay, I don't want to become egotistical, you know, and think that I'm God's gift to anybody, but I think there is more to me than I let myself believe for a very, very long time. Cool. Which plays into this next next question. So many people may have what it takes to make it in business, but they can't seem to put the pieces together. Uh, how have you been able to organize your life in such a way that you're able to juggle so many things and be effective at it? So I really make my businesses my bread and butter um, and having a spouse and children who back that up has really helped because I know there's a lot of people out there. They don't have that spousal support and support. Um, I've had a lot of agents join me and get really, they start going really fast when they're at my company and then their spouse will pull them and they're like, no, my spouse said, I can't do this anymore because literally this is my life. Um, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, I eat, sleep and breathe my company. Cause like, who's going to feed my kids at the end of the day, me, like I have to make this happen. So, um, I've made it a priority. Now I don't, I don't, you know, not show up to birthday parties or events or this or that, but I will tell you, um, I've told the story before the way I'm wired to keep organized is I always am in communication with my clients. I mean, on my, I think it was my second son. Yeah. I was on my way to labor and delivery with my second son. And I had all these appointments lined up for that day. Most people would shut down, turn their phone off, not talk to anybody. Those people are offending for themselves. No, I was literally on the phone at 4 a.m. Hey guys, I'm in labor. I'm heading to the hospital. I'm going to have somebody there for you today and they're going to take it from there. Like I am still on top of it because that's my responsibility. It takes you two seconds to respond to somebody. I I think I think so many people have so many excuses of as to why they can't do stuff in life. And that that's a big thing that I preach at my company is just like, Sure. Yes. You have to go pick up your children from, from school. We all do, but you don't make that known to your client. You just say, Hey, I have a prior engagement, but I will take care of you. And I hear you. So that's kind of how I operated doing all of this is just, you stay on top of it. You acknowledge what needs to be done. If you can't do it right now, get to it. But, um, I just, everything I do is very, just very organized. Like I go through my cell phone every week and clear all the text messages I don't need. I get my inbox down to about 10 every day. Like I just like, everything's a system. And a lot of people can't do that. Um, so that's where my husband's like, you're wired differently. You know, like I know that takes a, spe a special personality um, to do that, but <laughs> the organization is key. So absolutely, absolutely. Organization is so paramount, you know, and a lot of these things are basic professionalism, you know, like following up yeah. with people or you've got active conversations going on and you have things come up. You still got to just send a message. Hey, you know, I can't get to that right now, or I've got a prior engagement, but somebody from my team will be responding to you. And even having somebody else that maybe has access to whatever your messaging platforms are to then be your assistant in stand in, yeah. you know, whatever it may be. Um, yeah. There's so much there that I think a lot of people do overlook the simple, the just the professional practices. And, right. and, and it's and it go figure that, you know, in I, I love learning from people and hearing from people that are doing very well professionally that it's kind of the basic stuff like like don't don't let the ball drop you know what i mean like stay keep your eyes on the prize stay focused and so yeah. you've talked about your your successful journey with uh real estate and that's profound to hear that you know you know after year one you you had practically zero sales or literally zero sales and you know your partner said no you're going you're going you're going to stick with this give it five years and then all of a sudden you're selling 40 up to 100 You've got people on your team. I mean, that's absolutely incredible. So taking it a step further, um, Damien is uh, involved in um, the show that, you, that you're a part of. Um, and he's been telling me about these uh, real estate television shows that are very intriguing. 
Um, and I'm, I'm fascinated in the world of production um, at all levels. So I'd love to hear a little bit about your journey into TV and, and the shows that you're working on and, and you know, sh share. Let, let, okay. Let's hear it. For sure. For sure. So um, as you already know, I went from zero to a hundred. Um, and then I got to a point where I was selling about 350 homes a year. That's kind of where we're at right now with my team. I've got um, currently 10 girls on my team and we're about 350. Um, I'd like to get to the point where we're at like five, 600, but baby steps. Um, with that, I started like my passion for marketing started, you know, I started playing the game, figuring it out. And, um, I was getting really aggressive with it. And I think my mindset was I really, really despise when I would make, I would make a post. And then all of a sudden six other realtors would copy and paste that post literally and, and take my words verbatim. And I'm like, you have got to be kidding me. Like I sat here for an hour and put that together. And then you guys just copy and paste it. So I started doing fun things. Like I would make up hashtags to see who would take it and like, just do, you know, I was kind of testing how social media was working. And then I started thinking, you know what? I, I really hate to be in the box and just be another number in the crowd. I mean, there's about 14,000 realtors in Oklahoma. Now that's a lot for Oklahoma, but um, other States, that's like a drop in the bucket. And I started thinking, okay, how can I take um, my marketing and just go next level where most people aren't? And I was like, that's TV, right? So not everybody can do that. And I started playing with it, um, started jotting down ideas, figuring out how can I take my social media to the next level um, when I'm just like a small town girl here in Oklahoma and I have zero production knowledge. I have zero connections. Um, so it was quite a challenge. I mean, it was an eight year, it was an eight year journey that I've been on truthfully. So, um, about seven and a half years ago, I got in touch with a network that has a couple of big shows out there that everybody knows everybody loves. They're always playing in the doctor's office. I was like, that's where I want to go. Like that's, that's me. And started pitching my ideas, got my connections. And it was always just like, I'd almost get there and then it would fail. You know, um, I even got to a point where I filmed a pilot. They flew out. We filmed, we did the whole nine yards, everything. Um, and then six months went by and they were like, you know what? We're so sorry. The network wants to go with more celebrity faces. I was like, dude, make me a celebrity. I will make you some money. You know, I was like, let's make this work in that time frame, um, that's when Reveal came along and they said, Hey, we have this real estate show. We're looking for people to run some ads. And I'm like, done. That is my doorway in. Right. I always see the big picture. Most people don't, they want instant gratification today is like, yeah, everybody's like, I want it now or, or not at all. And I knew, I said, okay, here's a network who is on the same page as me that, you know, they realize, okay, realtors, they want to see themselves. I mean, it's unfortunately just, you don't see dentists saying, I pulled 60 teeth today. How cool am I? You know, you just, you don't see any other profession gloat about every move they make. <laughs> and so, um, I signed up with, I signed up with reveal and, um, was running some ads, doing my stuff, meeting every week that they had their calls. And finally I learned who they were. We, we built relationships and I was comfortable enough to say, Hey, listen, this is a good idea, but I think you could go bigger with actually putting agents on the show, you know, and, and really making a show that's not out there. And so that's kind of how all of this came about. And the president was like, okay, well, before we do that, let me fly out and film you to see if you're just all talk. <laughs> so he flew, like, they came out, the whole crew came out. Um, we did two back-to-back -back episodes and then they were like, okay, we think you've got something that we can work with, you know? And that's the birth, if you will, of negotiators Lux is just this idea of like, how can we, how can we get how can we get us over here on a bigger platform? And, and so we're there, we're still figuring it out. I mean, with anything like success does not come overnight. And that's what I keep telling myself. Okay. It took me many, I mean, gosh, a decade to really a decade to get where I am in my, my real estate company, you know, like it took 10 years to open a brokerage, have 40 agents doing all these things. I'm, I mean, create this machine. So it's going to take time to get negotiators locks to where 
people know what that is. They're like, oh my gosh. Oh yeah. That real estate show. I love it. I watch it all the time. And so we're in the, I mean, we just launched, if you really think about it, what maybe we've got, we've got our fifth episode coming. So I keep telling everybody, I'm like, listen, season one is going to be completely different when we look back, you know, and I keep picturing 10 years from now being like, oh my gosh, do you remember when I first started filming how terrible I was? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I have that, that vision of just, this is going to be something really cool. And it, it's now turned into, I wanted to be on TV with real estate for marketing to now, oh my gosh, let's open this up to other people, like-minded people across the country to where, and they're out there. I mean, we're finding the people who are like, this is, I want to do this. I, I want to take my real estate to the next level and be on the show and I could just talk about this forever. So sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It's great. It's really <laughs> cool to hear about about your journey into that. And um, for our audience that doesn't know, what is Reveal and where where can people see this show, Negotiators Lux? Yeah, you want to take it away, Damien? You're like smooth on that. Yeah, Reveal is a third year streaming service. We are we were formed during COVID. We're COVID baby, and it, we have a stream. We have a carrier agreement with Apple TV, Google Play. Amazon Fire, Roku, um, free app you can download on any Android or Apple device and a potential audience of 160 people worldwide. And so this is, you know, there are three seasons of the original Negotiators, which Mariah was on. She had a double episode and now we're on the first season of Negotiator Lux. And like she said, you know, there are agents that jump at this. And it's funny because some agents think it's a scam. Others don't understand what we're trying to do. But the ones who get it, get it quick. And those who don't, never will. Um, and it's that big picture vision. And like you said, it took you 10 years to build your your brokerage. Same thing with Negotiator Lux. Like, I've been on those production meetings. And I, myself and JJ, doing this podcast, we got this saying that served me so well. Get messy, get better. Don't overthink it. Anybody can make a mess. And you can't clean something up that isn't there. So it's like, make something and then it. better. Rinse and repeat and then relax into the next level. So that 10-year time frame seems to be the, the line of demarcation. I've heard it takes 10 years to build a world-class physique. Apparently 10 years to, to make a great brokerage. And I don't know if it's 10 years for a TV show, but that that's evidence, right? If you're consistent for 10 years, you're going to get pretty damn good at whatever it is. Granted, if you are self-aware, you are reflective and you're making those small adjustments and no doubt where Negotiator Lux is season one to season three to season five to season 10 is going to be night and day. And just thinking about something you said a little bit earlier, like your business is, is at the forefront and it makes me think like you're so committed to it. And the same thing for 10 years, you're committed to your business And I heard Jordan Peterson say this, that a commitment is the same thing as a sacrifice. You're killing off a lot of other things and you're picking your one path and you're going all in on it. So it's it's really cool to see that. And when you stay on that path, you meet other like-minded individuals like William Shepard, the president of Reveal. And really good collaborations. One thing that I've noticed is when those those like minds meet, they're receptive. It's not my way or the highway. That just fizzles out. It's and it's not one plus one. It's it's like an exponent. It's a, it's it's exponentially more powerful. So when you got with William and you saw what Negotiator evolved into, it was exciting because we got to say like, hey, we have this baseline thing. Well, it's it's like alchemy in a way. And I can I assume it's the same way when you get a new agent. Obviously, you're the you're the leader of your brokerage. But when they come in, you can tell if someone's receptive or not. So when you see a new agent that you go, wow, there's a lot of potential there. How do you go forward with someone like that? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, first of all, I put every ounce of me into them, train them everything. I show them the ropes. I don't hold anything back Um, because at the end of the day, I always tell everybody, sure, you could duplicate and copy and paste everything I'm doing, but you will never be me. So it will never be the same. And so I'll tell them, I'll tell them it all. 90% of it, people aren't going to do, right? Um, so when I find those little golden nuggets, I hold on to them. I pour into them. I I try to keep them around. Real estate has a really high turnover rate, like 80% failed their first year. Um, and a lot of people 
brokerage hop. So it's just part, it's just a part of it. Unfortunately, um, I have gone through, my team has cycled now probably three or four times of people just because they get to a point they're like, Oh, I can do what she's doing. So they leave, they try to duplicate, they fail out every time I have yet to see anybody leave my company and do what I'm doing. So it took me a hot minute to realize, okay, like I was worried, oh my gosh, they're going to take my stuff. They haven't. But uh, when I see those little, when I see the ones that are really, really good, um, they get most of my stuff, you know, so they're, they're getting the phone, they're getting the good leads. They're getting the one-on-ones they're, they're getting the Glenn Gary leads. Um, so you yeah. said, you know, you pour into them and that, that people won't do 90% of the things that you say, the nitty gritty, the work that goes on scene. What is that 90%? So a lot of it is, um, well, I've changed a lot in the last year on how I run my team because of the accountability aspect. Um, I partnered with Zillow. So a lot of people, when you think of Zillow, you think of a premier agent where they pay them every month, they get leads in return, whatever, whatever. I'm on a completely different program. There's only seven of us in Oklahoma that are on the program. You can't pay to be in it. You can't ask to be in it. It's like an exclusive invite. And it's because I poured in a lot of time and money to Zillow for many years. And they were like, okay, she's, she's our go-to. So, um, I'm on that program and it's called flex. And, um, if you are a flex agent at my company, which I only have 10 right now, if you don't do what you have to do, you're out. And so I pretty much like, that's, I hate to do it, but bi-weekly we have meetings. And if you're not hitting quotas or you're not doing these things anymore, like the 90% of things I need you to do, you're out. So I finally have people who will do it. You know, they make those calls, text, emails, they they do the nurtures, they do the home searches, they do the setup, they do everything I need them to do in order to stay to keep getting the business. Cause if they don't get the business, they get the boot, I find somebody else. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can't let you can't let people like sleep on on leads and, and not follow up with people. So um, just to get some more, I, I, I love the tangibles. I feel like conversations can be very flowy and it's really cool to think about, okay, what are these tactics? So like when you think about those things that people aren't willing to do or they forget to keep up with, but like, what are some of those things that you think are so essential, whether it's, you know, certain kind of paperwork and obviously, you know, if it's proprietary, you know, I don't feel like you have to spill the beans, but oh, our right. audience would love to hear some, some practical techniques. If you've got any on your mind, I have nothing to hide. Um, so I have, I use a CRM system called follow-up boss, and that allows me to see what they are doing every day. I can see if they've logged in, I will text them and say, Hey, it's been two days since you've logged in. What's up? You know, they're supposed to log in every day. And I know some people are thinking, Oh my gosh, I got into real estate to be flexible. Real estate is not a flexible job. Like you are 24 seven nights, weekends, holidays, birthdays, and you have to be available. And so people on my team, that's what I tell them. If you're on this, you're on call 24 seven. Um, so first and foremost, I check to see if they log in every day. If they don't, they get turned off on lead flow until they tell me what's up. Um, they have to do home searches every, every lead that comes in, even if they didn't ask for a home search, you build one out based off of the house they inquired on. Cause it'll always come over. They just clicked on the three bed, two bath home for 150,000 in Norman have the conversation with them. There's a, a protocol we have to follow with Zillow. It's called ALM. And if they don't, a robot's listening to them. If they don't hit that, they get dinged, they get turned off. So <laughs> once that call comes through, they're supposed to go to the database and on follow-up boss, leave the notes. Here's what they were talking about. Set up a home search, send them their e-business card. Hey, here's my direct contact information. I'm your main point of contact for anything you see in, in, if you find any house for sale, no matter who has it listed, you come to me. So those are kind of the things that I look for. Um, and then I look for if they're following up, have they set up drip campaigns? Are they communicating with them? Because I can filter through the CRM. When's the last point of contact? You know, like I, I, and I don't sit there all day, like the Wizard of Oz and just watch what they're doing and micromanage. But I do check quite often. I'll hop in there and kind of give them a little surprise, like, hey, you took this guy three days ago and you've not even followed up with him. What's going on? And I got to a point where if they go so many days not communicating, I just pull the lead and I put it in a pond and I let them know, hey, there's a fresh lead in that pond that's not being worked. So it's a system. I mean, I don't I don't like to handhold adults, but I, I've my husband's like, this is why it's Calhoun Group Realty because 
you are the one who will do it the way it needs to be done. So you do have to kind of micromanage those people, but you're on the chariot um, at the front of the race. Unfortunately, saying, hey, you know, this is the way we're going. Come and on, I'm cavalry. a people person. So it's, it's hard. It's hard when you're a people person because I used to be very like, I'm so sorry to ask you this. I just noticed you hadn't been in there in two days. And they're like, no, 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 no. You are the HBIC. You got to be like, listen, you're either in or you're out. So that's been a really hard like personality trait to change. Um, it, I've had to really kind of like really become more, I don't know, you know, aggressive. Damien has been in a couple of our calls and I'm a little more of a straight shooter now. Um, even if it's production or real estate, it's like, here's what you have to do. Like, we can't just sit here and look at each other all day. We have to like get the ball in motion, you know? This is the process. These are the steps that you take. Hey, how would you describe a drip campaign in the most subtle, simple way? Yeah. So drip campaign. I mean, so many, so many of these little pieces of jargon they're, they're, they're to the people that know, they know. And the people that don't know, they go, Oh, what, you know, what is that exactly? So do you mean email or do you, with your CRM yeah. and they get a text yes. and then a DM and then, then you show up at their the house things. and bang on their door. What's up? So yeah, you know, I hate them, but they're, they're important um, because you have to stay top of mind. So drip campaigns, I don't have too many just because me on the outside, like I don't like receiving that stuff. So I take that into consideration when I'm building mine out. I try to build it and make it as personable as possible. And it's just very like, Hey, you know, once they go into nurture status, Hey, this is Calhoun group realty. You reached out to us from Zillow on whatever day, you know, it'll be auto. It's all auto populated through the system. Um, I just wanted to know if you still needed our help. If you don't, please let me know, please let me know so I can re remove you from the database. And a lot of people will chime in and be like, Hey, no, thank you so much. And it's so much easier than just, you know, I don't know, sending 20 emails and waiting for them to reply. But my drip campaigns are built that way, where it's just like these subtle touches. Hey, I noticed you were looking at this house. Let me know if you have any questions. Hey, it's been, you know, a couple of weeks since we last spoke. And and I have, it just depends, it just depends on each person what drip campaign they go in. So, you know, we've got our nurtures, we've got all our long-term nurtures, we've got our people who have closed with us, people who have closed, they go on drip campaigns as well. Hey, it's been six months just checking in, seeing how your house is. Do you have any questions? Please let please know I'm here to answer any questions. I'm not the typical realtor that just walks away after you close. I'm here to help. Like, so it just kind of depends on who it is and on what campaign we set up for them. Sure. And they might want to refinance or, you know, change homes or, you know, hey, you know, they've got a two-car garage, but they'd like something with a three-car garage or it doesn't have a pool or those kinds mm -hmm. of things. Um, yeah. So Damien, um, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts about what she's talking about as far as uh, drip campaigns or, or building out the team and uh, kicking people to the wayside that aren't uh, following through with what they need to do. <laughs> also, just before you jump in, you said uh, the network has 160 something impression possibilities of viewership. Is that 160,000 million? 160. 60, well, the first season of Negotiators has 5.5 million impressions, which is very impressive in this market of Netflix and Hulu and Amazon Prime and Peacock and all these other big guys. We're the underdog and we pride ourselves on that. Uh, 160 million potential potential viewers um, world worldwide. Yeah, we are we are we are global. What I liked about what you said, Mariah, is that personal accountability. It bled over into you having to evolve. You have to have these hard conversations in order for yourself to grow. And as a consequence of showing up and, and building that part of yourself that is direct and goes, hey, you're not cutting it, you're gone, or you're not cutting it, step up or you're gone. You've evolved and through that, your business has grown. So that just shows credit that everything we need is with within us and it takes conscious, repeated effort to bring those aspects out of ourselves so that we can become greater versions of ourselves. And it's funny that you have this, this flex program, but you have to be very not flexible. It's all about your career and keeping that. And I think it's easier to, to have those hard conversations when you know, hey, on the other end, there's going to be growth. So there's going to be good. And it's that whole thing to, to become more comfortable in your own skin. You have to embrace discomfort. And Having those hard conversations is directly correlated to how fast you can grow and how consistent you can be. 
And I, I, I'd argue that you're probably having these hard conversations pretty often because you're growing pretty consistently. Oh, yeah. Uh, it sucks, but I think it gets easier each time you do it. Um, <laughs> it wasn't easy at first, you know, because I don't like people not liking me. But then I realized, OK, not everybody likes Chick-fil-A. So you can't, you know, not everybody's cup of tea. I know there's people like posted on Facebook the other day. They're like, I don't know what the hype is. I'm like, it's amazing. I love Chick-fil-A. Okay. So I had to realize, you know, cause people perceive you like when, when people think about Mariah, they've met her one way or another. Right. And that person's always going to have that thought process of me. There's no way that I can change that as much as hard as I want to, you know, as much as I want to, but and when I started to self-reflect and look at that and be like, okay, people aren't going to like the way that I do this or this or that, you know, because when agents leave, they run their mouth. They do. It doesn't matter what you do. They run their mouth. It took me a hot minute to realize, okay, I can give them the sun, the moon and the stars. And when they decide I no longer fit their need, their narrative is going to be that I suck no matter what. I've watched it time and time and time and time again. And, and I'm going off on a tangent, sorry, <laughs> but, um, no, we're about it. We're about it. You know, that's what I, this, uh, this conversation about evolution is, you know, and, um, it's hard now how to, how to describe your journey, you know, especially when you're talking to people, you know, and you don't know what's exactly going to come up off the cuff. I'm just going to throw out one of our questions that I love to ask, which is what does evolution mean to you in your, in your personal life, in your professional life? And when you think of evolution now, the name of our podcast and our project, you know, what comes to mind? I think it's everything that we're talking about is like, I have evolved from the girl who graduated from the University of Oklahoma, who was working for a company and making, I don't even remember how much I was making. Um, and I was managing, I was managing massive complexes by myself. Um, it was terrible. I mean, I will never forget. I've been flashed. I've been cornered. Like the stories I could tell alone just for managing apartment complexes. Um, never again. From going from that person who had to check in with the big man, hey, I'm so sorry. Like, may I ask today off because I've got to do X, Y, and Z? And they're like, absolutely not. Going from that person to, okay, I'm going to start my own company to, well, actually not starting my own company. I'm going to get my license and work for people for them just using me as a runner, you know, and, and saying, help me sell this house and I'll give you $500. I'm like, heck yes. And then I realized they made like $8,000, you know, and I was the little man who did all of the work, um, to kind of like that growth of just then being the boss. And then Actually, I'd say complex to working for people to finally kind of figuring it out to building a team, then getting my broker's license and then opening a, a company with another person and then realizing, screw all these people. I don't need a single person to do what I'm doing. That was kind of like the aha moment of, okay, I've got this and I know more than half of these people that were trying to tell me what to do. Um, that's the evolution. Like, I think people don't trust themselves enough. I never thought I would be a broker ever. The thought of it, I was like, absolutely not. Never in a million years. Now I'm a broker with 40 agents <laughs> and they're, and I'm like almost the youngest one at my company. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's the evolution of like getting out of your own way and just like doing it and make it happen. I say, make it happen all the time. That's where my other TV show came in. It was just kind of like, you got to just get out of your own way and do it. This life is so short. This life is so short for all the trivial stuff. Just do it. If you screw up, okay, you, you learn your lesson. Let's do something different the next time. <laughs> deep thoughts, deep thoughts. I'm holding space for Damien to jump in. I always, uh, <laughs> I'm always uh, the first one to jump in and just start talking and, uh, as we've, you know, this this podcast, this project that we're working on has been really evolving so organically. And, we, you know, every time we, we review the episodes, we think about how do we pass the mic back and forth? How do we make it entertaining for our viewers? How do we make sure that our guests have a good time and feel like they're really shining? And it's amazing just to hear about the journey with real estate because, you know, everybody needs a place to live. Everybody, you know, needs a place to do their business. Uh, you know, commercial real estate is is a massive market as well. 
Um, but yeah, Damien, jump in, brother. Yeah, I like Mariah's development the way she 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 communicates because it is now. It's always now. She's always thinking. She's feel like you're very present a lot of the time where you're seeing the bigger picture and you're going, okay, how do people see me? How can I change it? What can I actually control? And how can I take steps to be more like that person that's going to get the result that I want? And I love that you've just been doing that. And it's been this ongoing evolution, for lack of a better term, and that you have a family. And what you said earlier is you have a strong family life. And that's something that, you know, is kind of been swept under the rug currently in society the importance of having that place where you can come home. So your antenna is always up. Your radar is always going. How do you, do you turn it off? Do you ever like need a day or how do you, how do you, it's not balance, right? It, it's like an equilibrium. What's your equilibrium? Like, what do you do to just like kind of chill out and, and like muscles, like building muscles, they build at rest. So I'd imagine at some point you need to kind of step away. So what's that look like for you? So I think I've lately been in my rest mode because, you know, I'm running the brokerage. I have a wedding venue. Um, I made it, I'm juggling both of these TV shows at the same time. And I kind of, in the last couple months, I've stepped back and I'm like, okay, how can I do all of this efficiently? Because I'll tell you, like, it is not, I mean, it is not easy. I am a high functioning anxiety queen, if you will. Like, Simple tasks like going to a soccer game are mentally really hard for me. I still do it. Um, and I think that's why I thrive personally in business is because I'm controlling every aspect of it where um, I will be the first to admit I have a control problem. Like it is what it is. It's how I'm wired. I can't control these other things that are happening or, you know, <clears throat> so they're hard for me, but I've been in a, a more so... I don't want to say I've pulled away. I've just been really analyzing every business that I'm doing right now and making sure I'm doing it efficiently. Real estate is is going well, going strong. We're keeping great on that. Um, the market is slowing down, so that's helping. And I know that sounds crazy, but this downtime is such a refreshing reset that I'm like, okay, this is great. We're going through kind of the cleansing moment. A lot of agents are going to get out. The market is slow. Sellers aren't going to be moving as fast. So I'm here for it. I'm here for it because I'll be ready for springtime when it starts kicking back up. Um, the wedding venue, we have, we've had a lot of events. It's been, it's been amazing. It's been a really sucky start. Um, we, we kicked off during COVID. Like when I tell you we were ready for events was like the week they announced everything was shut down. Like, so, so yeah, I mean, it, the the venue itself has been like, it was basically the place I was looking for to get married. Um, gosh, how long have I been married? Um, 13 years ago? Yeah, something. Um, it's been a hot minute. Um, I couldn't find it. So my parents were like, let's find some land and build it. Not like, not for me. I'd already gotten married by that point. So we were like, heck yes. Yeah. So I got my parents some land, found them 20 acres, built the venue. COVID happened. And then honestly, um, my mom's been struggling with some health issues for the past 10 years, um, really damaging autoimmune disorder. Um, she was unfortunately just diagnosed with breast cancer for the second time, um, this year. So the, just that alone in that world, I don't, I don't really touch the venue at this point, you know, like the venue is there and we're kind of in coast mode but I'm like, what do I do? Do we keep going? Like, so that's kind of what's happening with the, the wedding venue. It's still there. We still have a lot of events lined up. Um, <clears throat> we're just trying to get through, we're just trying to get through the cancer at this point, you know, cause the, the venue is on my parents' property. And so it's like, are my parents going to stay there? Or like, I don't know. I love the venue and it's beautiful. Um, so that is, that's kind of where I'm at this, like I've stepped back and I'm like, okay, what are we going to do? Um, I'm kind of taking that one a day at a time, you know, like I'm going to keep moving forward, keep working it. Um, I'm just not working it as hard as I could and that's okay. Um, and then with the TV shows, they both hit at the same time. Like I was invited to, 
have my own reality show on a brand new network called your home TV and your home TV network. So it's like a baby, it's a baby network, you know, it's, it's younger than reveal. They literally invited me to have my own TV show, like the same month that reveal was like, let's do negotiators Lux. And I'm like, holy Batman, that's like a huge, like two huge opportunities. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh shit, like I've never done production in my life before. So with all that being said, I have been kind of analyzing everything, making sure I'm doing everything that I can. So my, my goal, um, I never stop. I just kind of slow down when I'm, I know that I need to. And right now is my slow down, like, okay, real estate wedding venue. And I'm going to just sit down. And my, my goal for 2024 is to just sit down with both of the networks and just freaking dominate them because real estate is kind of in coast mode at this point. And I'm just like, I want to take, I want to seize these two opportunities that are there and just dominate them and blow. I want to blow those up. Like I did my real estate business. Yeah, let me ask you, Maya, um, how much sleep do you need? Are you someone that can just like sleep for three hours and be like, boom, or do you? No, I actually, no, I need a hormonal doctor because I am so like high anxiety. That's actually what I've been doing this week is trying to find a doctor to help me with all of this. I sleep really well, contrary, but to what people may think, but I can't get enough sleep. <laughs> like, I will go to bed, hit the pillow at like 10 o'clock. I, if you, if my husband does not wake me up and I hate to even say that, that's so embarrassing. I can sleep till noon. Like I will sleep. I wish I could go like two or three hours. Like some people, you know, like William, I, does William sleep? I don't think that man sleeps. He, yeah, no, it's a hundred. He's going 110 or he's asleep. And yeah, he's like you, you guys are wired differently. You have this super high gear, um, but it's 24/7. You know, yeah, 24 seven. It's like you have all this fuel to, to, to drive all your goals and you have the proper channels to put it into. Um, so let me ask you, do you, do you think it's a problem or you only think it's a problem because other people tell you, you need to slow down? Everybody. I will tell you that is the one thing that like, I don't get mad. I'm not an angry person. But the amount of people in the last decade that told me to slow down, um, I, I, that would, there's my idol right there. The, all the people who told me to slow down or I couldn't do this, they were the fuel for the, I was like, mm, hold, hold this, watch me. And then I was like, I'm just going to keep going. Cause it drove me, oh, I don't know where this podcast is going to go. So I'm going to be very careful on what I'm going to say. There was a particular, particular person in my life that. They were like, mm, I'll come work for you. You know, let's do that. So they came and worked for me. I'm like, I'd like to be promoted. Sure, I'll promote you. And just kept kind of going down that path. And then one day it was like, I just don't really want to hear from you anymore. You know, um, I don't want to work for you anymore. And it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. And then as soon as that was severed, where they didn't work for me anymore, I was given this long list of things that people say about me. And it was a very like aha moment of, oh my God, people suck, you know? And, you know, the, the greater you do for yourself and the more you like push yourself and start building all these things, like the angrier people get around you. Hey, if you, if you don't have haters, you're not doing the right thing. You know, Damien and I talk about that a lot. As soon as you have haters, you know you're winning, you know? And, you know so, are, and you'll never be told to do less by someone that's doing more than you. And then I started hearing it all the time. You need to slow down. You, you got to stop. This is what people are saying about you. And I'm thinking, why are we entertaining what people that don't know me have to say about me? And what's so funny to me is I always watch this. I'm like, people will just fawn over celebrities, Okay. Like they will, they are obsessed with every ounce that they post and they'll share everything and they love everything. And they're like, oh, you're so beautiful today. But if it's somebody, you know, that you went to high school with, or, you know, that's in your town, they tell you to kick rocks and eat shit. Like, and you're just like, I'm just running a company. Like I have no malintent. And so it's, so the people who told me I couldn't do this or I need to slow down, 
there, my driving force. That should have been my answer earlier. <laughs> I, I love that because it shows that you're really in touch with that dark side of yourself, that killer <laughs> instinct. And I didn't know that. The about red you. hair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's your, <laughs> where there's bread, there's fire. Right. <laughs> but the fact that you've harnessed that and it hasn't like completely destroyed you. In fact, it's probably your greatest weapon that you're able to take that sharpen that energy to a point and use it like a scalpel to pick things apart. Now, this is something I heard Alex Ramosi say. It's when you're chasing your dreams, people will cheer for you because it reminds them of their own dreams. But when you when you achieve success, they'll hate on you because it will remind them that they failed. So it sounds like you saw that full spectrum of like, hey, we'll support your business. And then you do you do well. And they're like, yeah, but yeah, it doesn't sound, I mean, if you and your head feel good and you love that high gear and that killer instinct and that go, 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 go. And the only problem is people telling you to slow down. You don't have a, you don't have a problem. It's, it's, it's everybody else exporting their lack of effort and they're seeing you just go and they're like, that's, that's, that's not healthy when really they're not doing jack shit. So fuck them. Wild. I no? know. I know it's been a long road. I'm on the other side of it affecting me though. The last two or three years, it was really affecting me, but now I'm kind of like, well, look, look at where you're at right now. Like you freaking rent in a house now. Cause you lost yours. Like, of course I don't condone, you know, I don't wish that on anybody, but time reveals all. Yeah. And it's, it's so essential <clears throat> to maintain that winning mindset, you know, because the, we, we, we live, you know, the average in the world is, is mediocrity. Right. And, you know, uh, love him or hate him. I'm, I'm a big fan of Grant Cardone because he's got this just fearless charisma, you know, mm -hmm. and he's like, haters going to hate, you know, uh, <laughs> the haters tell more people about me. You know, and it's like, you know, that's um, I love it. You know, you got to stay motivated. And I, you know, I, I love that you say that you um, instead of stopping, you slow down. And um, I've just started a, a running protocol. I'm running three or four times a week, adding miles every week. And my dream is to do a marathon for the first time that, uh, this coming January, give myself plenty of time to work up to it. And one of the techniques I have that I've had for a long time with running is that as I'm running, I'll pick either a time or I'll think of a, a route that I'm going to do a certain distance and I'll commit to that. And I, and I won't let myself stop. It, you know, if my heart is pounding, I'm gasping for air, I'll allow myself to slow down, but I never just stop. Like, I'll never stop and walk. I, I will slow down to a, to a grandpa jog, but I, I never stop. And then and then I then I keep going, and I just keep going, and I keep going. And every time I go at it, I you know, I, I find my ability to endure and to increase my endurance. Um, I think, Damon, you could probably reflect that as well. There's a lot of things that you do where you just, you know, you don't give up, you stay at it, huh? Yeah, I think there's a there's a there's a process where you go through the pain, whether you're sticking to a business, a running plan, a workout plan, a nutrition plan. At some point, because I, I believe we're a collection of patterns that interweave and make up our personality and our lives and all the micro can be zoomed out and you see the macro. But the more that you can deal with yourself and, and see those drops in the pattern, the more you'll be able to stay in that business for the long term, the more you'll stick to that running plan. Um, the more that you can see the bigger picture. Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to kind of, as we're rounding out this podcast, um, Mariah, what, what do most people get wrong about marketing? Mm -hmm. All of it. No, um, <clears throat> they, they don't set like, I think this day and age, people don't realize that you are your business. So when you're out there on social media, you can't separate your, like you can't, you just, you can't put everything out there that you want to, right? If you weren't running a business, sure. I think that's what people get wrong about marketing is on their Facebook, they'll post all day long their political views and then they'll have a business page and both of them are public and people will check what's going on in both worlds. And it's like, you have to, ha you have to be mindful of how you have to be on the straight and narrow as everybody has an opinion, Right. Um, it doesn't mean you always have to agree with it, but I think most agents that I watch when they market, they have something to say about what's going on with COVID, what's going on with the president, what's going on with this, this, and that. And I'm just like, you cannot, you can't do that. Like if you want to run a successful business, you have to be on the straight and narrow. Um, I don't think there is one person that could sit here and 
anyone that knows me for that fact, I don't think anybody could nail down what my political views are ever. I will keep people guessing forever. Um, and it's kind of fun at this point. Um, because I watch how certain people talk to other people, but yet they'll treat me differently because they don't realize where I stand, you know, and I'm just like, God, people are wild. So marketing wise, I think people don't know how to have that professional, that professional side 24 seven, um, or maybe they do it too much. Maybe they're too much about business on their social media and not enough, just like real raw organic. So I, I kind of do a little bit of both. Like you get a little bit of my kids, you get a little bit of the venue, you get a little bit of the filming, you get a little bit of real estate, you know, and I, that's been a good balance. So people aren't bored of me yet. I mean, I'm sure there are people bored of me, but you know, they don't want to see a house for sale every day. Nobody, nobody cares. Nobody cares that. You right. Like Gar house. Gary Vaynerchuk, you know, <laughs> he was one of the first ones to say, you know, jab, jab, <clears throat> jab, right hook, which is, you know, you got to entertain, you got to educate, you got to share things that people are going to want to look at. And then go for an ask or an offer, right? It's like you don't want to overshare. Yeah. The word I really like, I like I like the word diplomatic. I don't know if I'm using it correctly, but to be diplomatic <laughs> is to be courteous in your speech and also to not lean too far, you know, left or right other. or whatever it is. You know, being yeah. being able to stay on topic, on brand, I think is a, is a really really important thing to do. And it sounds like you're you're doing that in 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 a great way. I, I got to say, you know, just learning about you so far in this conversation, you're a very impressive person. It sounds oh. like you've achieved so much in your short period of time on this earth so far. And um, I'm excited to see your journey unfold as the as the years go on and as these shows continue to uh, um, take off. Um, Damien, well, did you think of me? Thank you so much for being here. Um, I feel like, Damien, you might have been in the middle of a thought before. Um, no, I mean, look, this has been a really cool, I mean, I've known Mariah for a couple months, um, pretty much the whole year. Um, it's been cool to kind of open up the hood and see some of those more, the more raw, raw parts of yourself, which have really been a driving force in your success. And that's cool. Just the fact that it hasn't consumed you and that you've, you've been able to use it because some people have that like killer instinct, but they just end up killing any progress that they have. So being able to channel in the proper avenues is really cool. Um, so as we wrap up, we kind of wrap up with the the same framework of like, is there a quote that you really like, or is there an event or anything coming up that you want to shout out? You know, no, the only thing that I always tell people is don't judge somebody else based off of somebody else's opinion. Cause that's been my life for the past five years is people are like, Oh, I heard she was this way. It drove me up the wall. I'm like, no, like, Form your own opinion about somebody once you meet them. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, form your own opinions. I, I I'll have that with people say, "Oh, I don't want to visit that city because this person told me it's a shithole," or "I don't want to see that movie because this person told me that they thought it wasn't that good." You know, but you've got to form your own opinions in life, especially when it comes to people. You know, right. because you, you, everybody has their own opinion, and you got to you got to form your own opinions. Um, but yeah, this has been a really wonderful conversation, you know, and it's, it's so lovely to hear people's, um, journeys, you know, in their personal and professional evolution, um, especially people that have achieved so much. I mean, uh, it's incredible. Like you said, like you never thought you'd be a broker and, and it's, you said now you have how many agents on your team? Right, right now I have 40 agents at my company and 10 of them are on my team. The rest are just like independent, you know, doing their thing, calling me when they need me. So as an entrepreneur, I would love to ask you a, a, a question. And so, uh, you know, a lot of people will will relate to this this concept in entrepreneurship, which you, you, the goal is to be working on your business and not in your business. And obviously, if you've got that many people working for you, you're well aware of that concept. Are there any um, tips or secrets or tactics um, that you can think of that have helped you to be able to grow a team and to be able to delegate and to be able to grow your business and not be doing everything yourself? You have to, you have to learn to let go and trust people enough to do those things and sure they are going to screw up. But once they screw up, you say, okay, here's how we, here's how this is corrected. Um, it took me a while to let go of the reins, you know, where I was like, well, just get out of my way. Let me do it. Um, and then once I learned, you know, okay, I, I can't, efficiently do all of this by myself, um, teach them, 
let them do it. Let them mess up. Kind of like Damien said earlier, I always hear William say it, get messy, get better, you know, get messy, get better. It's fine. Um, that'd be my one, a huge takeaway. Like it's not going to be perfect when you pass the reins off to somebody else, but you're still there to kind of help mold, pick it, you know, you can fix it. Everything can be fixed. It's not the end of the world. Um, that was my biggest thing. Like let go of some of the control <laughs> and expect the growing pains. You know, people are going to learn, you got to teach them and then you got to let them do it. You got to let them yes. mess it up. And then you've got to, you know, work on solving the problem so that they can grow and you have to allow them to go through the same growing pains that you definitely had to go through to, to build the skill that you've built. Yep. Um, yeah. Damien, you want to, you want to finish this thing up? My last thought is I know you have you have two kids at home, right? Yeah. You got 40 at the brokerage. So it's like it never it ends. So never ends. Um, it never ends. Yeah. No, hey, listen, this has been great, Mariah. Thanks for coming on Evolution Now. It's been really cool to hear more about your story. And um, I think our audience is really going to take some value from your experience in real estate and marketing. So thanks for having me. It was great. 100 percent Till next time, keep growing. Keep growing, everybody. Thanks for watching. Follow us and uh, reach out anytime. All right. Take care.